Hey, happy Father's Day, Pathway family. Hey, uh, for those who I have not had the chance of meeting, my name is Zorro. I'm one of the pastors here. And I get to do the God at work moment today. And for Father's Day, we're thinking like, okay, who should we have? Uh, these are the Ross brothers. You may see them around. Yeah. Um, honestly, I couldn't have think of anything, any better, anybody better than the Ross brothers but you see them at, at church and they have this amazing relationship, right? One of the most powerful moments I've ever had in my life, not just at church, in my life, was uh, Jody was up here leading worship one time and something happened where the spirit moved and he came down here to pray while he was leading. And I just see Jeff just run, run, and just hold him behind and was just praying for him. And then I know Jamie was stuck, so he couldn't get there. <laughs> but I was just thinking like, oh my word. Like, I want that. But it w wasn't always like this, huh? No, 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 no it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> well, for those who don't know us, uh, we're the Ross brothers. Uh, Jody, most people know Jody. He's been here, I think, going here for 15 <laughs> years plus or something. And he was the baby, and Jeff um, has gone on and off here for, for quite a while, and he is the middle child, which he is the self-proclaimed black sheep. So, <laughs> and I'm Jamie, I'm the oldest, the most handsome, the wisest, and all that. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, um, we grew up in a little, little town in the mountains of West Virginia, Went to uh, church all the time. My dad was a deacon. Our papa was the pastor and so forth. So we grew up in that. And we were always really close. They were more close. They shared a room. So they were really close. And uh, they have this special bond. So, but uh, our parents were wonderful. I've been, our family's been referred to as the Brady Bunch before. So, uh, but it wasn't always like that, you know, uh, about 13 I might get a little emotional. 13, 14 years ago, I started going through some, some struggles with, you know, marriage, family, and this and that. And what I did was probably the worst thing to do was I withdrew myself from the love of my brothers and my parents. And uh, so <laughs> during that time, I was just disgruntled, upset, always had an attitude and a chip on my shoulder. So Jeff and I, we butted heads all the time. We were always at each other. Jody was so grounded in church. He was like the mediator. And then at times he'd say, you know what? Just shut up. You guys go talk. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to hear it. Um, so that went on for many years. And then, uh, let's see. Um, and then about in the May, May of 2021, our, our life changed forever. And, and, and this is where the story picks up with you, right, Jody? And Jody. Yes. Your life changes. What happens in your life? Okay, so in March of 2021, our father uh, got died. Well, his cancer had came back. So in May of 2021, um, his the illness he decreased very quickly. So we had to um, us brothers. We had to step up. It was time for to us to do what needed to be done, regardless of the situation. So, um, we all have our own little gifts. Jamie, he was the fixer. He's a carpenter. Jeff, he's the planner. So, he was in charge of the medical. I was in charge of the finances. So, and we would have to, um, we all took turns. I think Jeff did the scheduling, staying the night. Our mother as well, she was not well at all. She she wasn't well enough to take care of our father on her own. So um, we would all, we would take turns spending the nights, doing dinners, doing food runs, um, being the caregivers for our parents. October the 4th of 2021, our father passed away. And um, we continued to care for our mother uh, because she was in and out of the hospital. Um, she had illnesses, um, some illnesses that had gone on for five years. <clears throat> July, July 4th, me and my wife 
Um, we took my mother on vacation with us to see the grandbabies and uh, my daughter. And my mom wasn't well, but she wasn't taking no for an answer of not going. So on our way back, mom slept the whole way. We knew there was something wrong. So we got back, we took her to the hospital and mom passed away in July, um, July 20th. So in a short amount of time, we lost our mother and our father. As we were walking through this, we also lost from January 21 all the way till my mother's passing in uh, July 22, we lost 10 family members aunts, uncles. It was a definite crisis, but with our wives, our family, and our, and our church, we got through this. So now we, um, moving forward, we started to see that God was working through a crisis. Yeah, so he brought all kinds of crises in your life. And today, you all are here, you all are serving. But Jeff, without tears, I mean, maybe I'll do, like, how cute is it that they all have matching shirts? Come on. It's like their Christmas PJ photo when they're eight. Come on now. All right, share, Jeff. Well, if you would have asked me even six months ago, do you see you three up on stage? Nope. Never happened. You see you all going to the same church and serving together? Nope, never happened. Wow. We was never going to church at the same time in our lives, and the other would always hound the one about, you coming? Oh, I'm going on south side today. Where's that? South side of bed. <laughs> uh, yeah, That's I, a dad I, joke. I got that from Joe. <laughs> but um, you see us here today, and um, God will use a crisis, and uh, he did. You see us. We're up here. We're serving. When... <laughs> When I see Jody up here praising God on stage, God, it just fills my heart. And Jamie out here keeping us safe. Shh, he's undercover. Shh. It just fills my heart, you know, and, and we're, our bond is so close. We have a text that's been going on for the past four years, and I don't know, that's probably over 100,000 messages on it. Um, he's not exaggerating. Um, and um, the, the biggest thing that... That, that I think really started grabbing us was the men's retreat uh, last year, the men's retreat. 2021, we went to the men's retreat together, and uh, the ride over was amazing. Being there amongst all these other guys are amazing. The, the, the small group table talk was amazing. We met so many people there, and we met a guy that it has kind of stepped in and filled a void <laughs> with us three, and... Man, he makes us accountable for our actions, and I step in it all the time. He sets me up, and what do I do? I walk right in, and I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. I appreciate that, but, you know, you need that accountability partner. And uh, the mid retreat was a big turn for me, and I know it was Jamie. It still took me a little while to get into where I really fitted in church, but um, you know, I'm here now, and uh, God has blessed us all, and our families have seen the big turn in us, and... Uh, uh, it's just been a real blessing, and it's just so awesome to share the stage with these three guys. They're yeah, this, this is truly a miracle, like really, what you see up here, yeah. Hey, I mean, well, so honestly, if you're, this gives me hope. If you're out there today and you have broken relationships with your siblings or anybody, this is hope. Because, again, like Jeff said, there's no way in the world they would have thought six months ago that this would be happening. And it's happening. And they're around. They're, they are, dude, these three dudes are on fire for Jesus. And I love it. And the men's retreat was a big part of that, right? And so today, when you walk out, if you're a dude, a man, there is a table out there. You can sign up for, your, for men's retreat or you can sign up your spouse, right? No, don't do that. Ask, ask permission first. But, hey, the cool thing is here at Pathway, um, one of the things that allows us to continue to do these ministries is, is our giving. So um, right now we're going to transition a little bit into our offering moment. So if you're an usher, uh, would you come on up here? Uh, we're gonna, let me lead us in prayer time for our tithes and offering.
Lord, all the stuff that we're doing here today wouldn't happen unless there was generous people, God. And there is generous people here at Pathway, Lord, that allow men's retreat, allow worship, allow our lights to be on, allow just everything, God, to happen here on our campus. So we pray, Lord, now as we open our arms, God, to you and just say, Lord, this is yours. All of it's yours. Thank you so much for allowing us to manage some of it. And we want to manage that well, Lord. So we want to give back to you, God. So we pray that you would take our gifts, Lord, and that you would bless it, that you would use it to bring people to Jesus or closer to Jesus. And may your name be glorified. We are so thankful, God, for this place and how you provide for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See on a hill of Calvary My Savior bled for me my Jesus set me free And look at the wounds that give me life Grace flowing from His side No greater sacrifice What He's done What He's done All the glory and the honor to the Son my sins are forgiven, my future is heaven, I praise God for what he's done. Come on, lift it up this morning. Sing for the freedom he has won, even death is dead and done, his life is overcome.
Jesus for who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. him work it for your good he's not done with what he started he's not done until it's good let him turn it in your favor watch him work it for He's not done with what he started. He's not done until it's good. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. It's a new horizon. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. It's a new horizon. Mm. If you're ready for a breakthrough, just open up and just receive. Cause what he's pouring out is nothing. not my future you are hallelujah sickness is not my story you are hallelujah heartbreaks not my home you are you are death is not the end you are oh, fear is not my future
enough, Lord. You're big enough for me, for all my situations. Oh, goodbye fear, goodbye guilt, goodbye shame. Goodbye pain, goodbye grave, it's a new horizon. Goodbye fear, goodbye guilt, goodbye shame. Goodbye pain, goodbye grave, it's a new horizon. Give it to him this morning. Goodbye fear, goodbye guilt, goodbye shame. Goodbye pain, goodbye grave, it's a new horizon. Goodbye fear, goodbye guilt, goodbye shame. Goodbye pain, goodbye grave, it's a new horizon. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you make all things new. Thank you that you've made things new in our lives and maybe some things haven't been made new yet. Make them new, Lord, in us. We call ourselves children of God because of who you are. And we have a heavenly Father that will never fail us, that will never let us down. So no matter what our experience here, you will never disappoint. You will never leave us or forsake us you are always present we give you praise and thanks lord hallelujah 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 sing this out this morning who am i that the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me and know his love for me Oh his love for me Who oh, the sun sets free Oh it's free
my father's house there's a place for me I'm a child of God yes I am hallelujah Lord for those in the room right now who feel fatherless who feel like an orphan fill them with your presence God fill them with your peace fill them with the love and grace of our heavenly father who will never leave or forsake them who will never abandon them who will always be available Thanks be to Jesus Christ for bridging the gap between our sin and God the Father. Thank you for your forgiveness, Jesus. Thank you for your forgiveness and your pardoning of what we've done. But let us also rest in the fact that nothing can separate us from the love of our God that is in Jesus Christ. May that love be felt profoundly right now, that acceptance, and that we don't have to earn anything. We are your child. You are our Father. And God, as we get into your word, may you minister to our hearts and encourage us and love us as only you know how. In Jesus' name, everyone said. Can we give Jesus praise in this place? Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Well, when the Father shows up, the real you will grow up. Isn't that true? I mean, y'all remember those moments, right? Like, just wait till your dad gets home. And you knew, like, when dad showed up, things were gonna change for the real you that mom just saw or whoever that might have been, right? I mean, it's, it's reality. And when the father does show up, the real us grows up. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today on this Father's Day. Uh, you know, to all our fathers, again, happy Father's Day. Uh, you know, we just celebrate you, we honor you. Uh, we, we recognize that there is a reality that th that's not an easy role in this world we live in right now. Uh, Father's Day, if you look at the history, goes back to about 1908. I thought this was really interesting. There was a service planned uh, by churches to honor a single dad. The daughter had actually approached the pastor and said, could we do something? He was, I guess, a dad of six children, single dad raising his kids. That's where it all began. It's actually in 1966 that President Johnson declared it uh, something uh, for the third Sunday in June, and then by 1972, it became a national holiday. And, and so this day is one we recognize, who God has called earthly fathers to be. Uh, I, I don't know if you're a father or not. I am. I want to show you a picture of my family. I am blessed. These are the people that make me a father. And... Uh, my wife, Cindy, is there in the middle, and my daughter, Hannah, who's 20 now, my son, Dawson, who's 17, Elle, who's 11, and Jasmine, kind of in the middle there, uh, as well, who is 11, too. Uh, Elle and Jasmine are not twins. Um, I'll, I'll get to that later uh, on, but uh, they, they allow me to be a father, and hopefully, my prayer, my hope, is that I'm actually showing them the father. Are you tracking with me? I mean... You know, I, I have a legacy I get to live under that preceded me. Uh, this is actually my father, uh, this next picture. Uh, in the white sweater, that's my father, Gary. He'll be in services today and even serving. And uh, just honor you, Dad, and celebrate you. Can you give him a hand with me? Um, that, that's me on the left, if you're wondering. And, uh, you know, on the right is my grandfather, Clayton Jones. And, uh, you know, dad and grandpa really showed our family the father in ways that set in motion something entirely different for generations. 
I mean, it's, it's because of their legacy that, that God has done something. And so as we dive into this today, I want to just share with you, you know, the heartbeat behind where our church is headed in the, the next year or so. You know, we have this big goal our staff and our leadership is talking about, and it's this idea of digging deeper, digging deeper and building a bigger people in Christ, digging deeper and building a bigger people in Christ. And, and when you think about that, this is what I know is, again, if, if the father shows up, the real us will grow up. Are you tracking with me? That, that when the father shows up, you and I, the real us, the us that needs his love, the us that needs his grace, his mercy, will begin to grow up and be more like our father, be more like Jesus who shows us the father. So as we get into this today, uh, we uh, have been in the book of Acts and, uh, you know, we're going to be there today, but we're actually going to backtrack a few chapters. Uh, you can turn, if, if you have your Bible, turn to Acts chapter seven. And uh, if you don't have a Bible and you, and you don't own one, there's Bibles available under the chairs. We would love for you to take one. It's a gift uh, from us to you. You know, as we get into his word together today in Acts chapter seven, uh, a few weeks back, we went through chapter seven, and, and there was something that really stood out to me and grabbed me. And, and we're going to look at this, and, and as we do, I think you'll see why. Let me just read to you the f- first two verses. It says, And the high priest said, Are these things so? And Stephen said, And before I read any further, I want to let you know who this guy Stephen is. Stephen will go on in this chapter to to lay down his life, to die as a martyr for the faith, the first martyr. In Acts chapter six, they they were picking leaders and as the apostles are picking leaders, they said, "We, we wanna look for people that are full of faith and a good reputation, full of wisdom and the Holy Spirit. And they land on seven and one of those seven is Stephen. Stephen is somebody of good reputation, full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And and what's happened by this point, when he begins to stand up to deliver this message that's going to come forth, is people have begun to see something happening in Jesus' church, in the early church, in this movement. And and they're beginning to come against it and to persecute because they're seeing that, that if there is something different, a father who's made himself known through Jesus... That, that now that's going to change everything. That's going to change our lives, our leadership, the very, and in fact, it's interesting, it's the religious leaders that are the most up in arms in this moment because they recognize that, that the power is potentially shifting and they're coming against that power that Jesus is showing and is now delegated to his apostles and to the early church. And so they're coming to Stephen and they're asking the question and Stephen gets ready to address it. Gives you a whole lot more to the context, doesn't it? So here we go. He says, brothers and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father, Abraham, when he was in Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, yeah. Before he lived in Haran. And he said to him, go out from your land and from your kindred and go into the land that I will show you. Then he went out from the land of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran. And after his father died, God removed him from there into the land in which you are now living. Yet he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot's length, but promised to give it to him as a possession and to his offspring after him, though he had no child. And God spoke to this effect that his offspring would be sojourners in a land belonging to others who would enslave them and inflict them for 400 years. But I will judge the nation that they serve, said God. And after that, they shall come out and worship me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob of the 12 patriarchs. Now, this story would go on. He continues to share, but his starting point is so critical and and important. You see, Stephen begins in the beginning, in this moment in time where the heavenly father had showed up to a man named Abraham. 
And as Abraham began to hear from the heavenly father, he was called to do something that would set in motion for generations the faith and the blessing that you and I now get to come under in Jesus. Amen? And so it's this moment that helps me to to step back and to see that there's a much bigger picture than often you and I are seeing. And he started in that moment in time because he saw something and knew something. You see, these religious leaders were accusing Stephen of changing things in a way that would discount the law that, that was against the holiness of God and who he was. And Stephen brilliantly brings them right back to, no, no, this this is what the father began with Abraham. Because the father began that, now we're continuing that. If you're taking notes here, earthly fathers will set in motion the father's plans. Abraham did it, said Isaac did it, Jacob did it. You and I know it's true. The the reality is you, you may have a heavenly father who has set in motion plans through an earthly father that you're seeing the results of today. Or maybe you're an earthly father and you're going, I don't know how to do it. And and, and what God's gonna say to you today is let me show up in your life. Because when he shows up, he sets in motion his plans. And here's the reality. When that earthly father doesn't fulfill his role or that earthly father fails in some area, Ultimately, that sets in motion God's plans as well. If you've been failed by an earthly father, if you're sitting here with a shrapnel wound and feel hurt and wounded, and you're feeling that loss, just know that that also can set in motion the plans of a God who says, I'm the one who wants to be your father, who wants to redeem you and restore you and fill you. So it's... Stephen shares this. He he pulled them back to Genesis chapter 12. Let me me show you exactly what he was quoting. This is in Genesis chapter 12, one through four. It says, now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. His heavenly father set in motion something in his life that would carry out the father's plans. Now, those of you that know the story know that Abram who would become Abraham was not perfect. That actually, if you carry the story forward in Genesis 15 through 17, there's a moment where he he deviates from the father's plan and actually has a child with a woman named Hagar, who's not his wife. And there's a son born Ishmael. And I got to tell you, if you look at the story, I don't believe that Abraham was actually a very good father to Ishmael. but God. And the reason I share that is, is, again, you may have had a great earthly father, but just like Abraham on the journey failed and had some flaws. Like y'all, I showed you a picture of my four kids. I'm not perfect. They're going to have areas of their life that they need the heavenly father to heal something that this father failed on. And what the Lord has been leading me through is just as Abram was on that journey and just as he journeyed with the Lord and found him through his flaws and his failures and found God speaking into it, do you know that there's this road between our head and our heart that's about 18 inches for most of us? If you got a really long torso, that's another story. All right, I don't, I don't know. I'm all torso. So 18 inches between head and heart, right? And that road sometimes is the longest road. And just as God said, Abram, I'm gonna call you out to go and I'll be with you and I'll show you, he followed by faith. 
And it was on that road through all the ups and downs, through his mistakes and other things, that, that somehow, some way, God was connecting Abraham's head and heart to trust the heavenly father in a deeper way. I believe he wants to do that in your life today. I'm gonna tell you full disclosure, I'm sitting with the Lord this week and I'm like, oh, that hurts. There's an area that God's showing me when he's like, yeah, I've connected your head and heart, but I wanna heal a deeper layer within that heart on this road right now. I'm just sitting in it and going, Lord, I trust you. I trust you're gonna show up in it. Because again, when the father shows up, the real me, I'm gonna grow up. And I think he wants that for each of his kids, amen? So as we land then in Genesis 22, there's two verses I wanna show you, but before we put them up, don't put them up yet. I gotta tell you what's happening because by this point, Abraham has, had, has come to a place where he is trusting the heavenly father. And God comes to him and says, listen, I want you to sacrifice your son. Whoa, hold up, wait a minute. You want me to sacrifice the promised son you gave me, Isaac? The one whom I believe all the blessing and, and the, the extension to the nations, all of that's gonna flow through him. You want me to sacrifice him? And it is such a picture of a trust of the Lord and an obedience to God that Abraham says, Isaac, let's go. Let's go. They pile up some wood things that they would need for the fire and the sacrifice, and they begin to travel together. Can you imagine, this is like, Abram's probably around 100-ish, Isaac's not, meaning he can scrap and win. You, you ever remember that moment where you're like, I think I can take dad now, <laughs> right? My, my son is in the weight room right now. He's pretty convinced he can take me. I mean, it happens. We get to that place. And, and here's this, this Isaac who absolutely could probably take his dad. But at some level, he's come to trust his earthly father. And they take the journey. And there's this powerful moment in verses 7 and 8 of Genesis 22 when, when they're going to be arriving at the place where he's going to bound, bind his son to an altar and follow what the earth... Heavenly Father has told him to do. Here's, here's seven and eight in Genesis 22. It says, and Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And you need to understand that the word father there is very similar to the word Abba, which we'll get to later. It indicates intimacy. And there's some level of this that also shows the obedience to the father. Says, Abram said, here I am, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So you have Isaac having to trust his father. You have Abram, Abraham also showing his trust in the father. He says, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them together. Now, as it plays out, you'd be going, whoa, wait a minute. Are we talking about sacrificing our son on Father's Day? We are. And the amazing reality is, as that story goes on, at the very last second, so Abraham raises the, the knife to sacrifice his son in obedience to his heavenly father. There's a ram in the thicket and God supplies and provides that sacrifice. God will always supply and provide when he's guiding and directing. His timing will always be different than ours. Like, I'm telling you, I'm the first to, to say, man, God always shows up, but it's never on my timeline, right? So he shows up and what we see is a picture that would then be fulfilled later in Jesus that the heavenly father sends the ultimate lamb, the sacrifice, Jesus, his son, to show up and show us the way to the Father. 
You see, scripture is amazing in showing us the Father. And God is so faithful in providing and often needs us to see past our earthly fathers to see how good of a heavenly father he is. So let me ask the difficult question here. How has the enemy repainted or tainted the image of the father? How has the enemy of your soul that wants nothing more than to steal, kill, and destroy, according to John chapter 10, that would love nothing more than to say, he's not worthy, you can't trust him, who would get you to doubt his word and his worthiness and the work that he has. That's what the enemy is trying to do. So in what ways has the enemy repainted or tainted the image of the Father? And, and what does the real you need to bring to God today? To say, God, and, and, and to be clear here, like if you're sitting with your Father or you're going to over lunch today, this is between you and your heavenly Father, like don't ruin lunch. <laughs> now, if you have an earthly Father that looks at you and goes, hey, um, like, I know I'm not perfect and God's moving in their life and they're humbly asking the question, that could be a very redemptive, restorative moment. But this isn't a moment to throw people under the bus. We're all human, we all make mistakes. But may we not allow those things to, to repaint or taint the image of the heavenly father and who he wants to be in our lives. You see, I'm pretty sure Isaac might have had some issues with Abraham for a minute after that moment. I mean, come on. Like, God, you showed up, but I don't know if I trust you, Abraham. I'm, I'm, that's not in scripture. Don't quote that. So God moves and works, and we, we, we see this picture of the heavenly father who, who's going to send the sacrifice. That leads us to Jesus. So we're going to move in our Bibles to John 14. This is where we'll spend the, the rest of our time today, is in John 14, looking at a passage that's a continuation of this idea that earthly fathers set in motion God's plans. Verses one through eight, Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house. Now you need to know, Jesus talking about the father in this way would have been very offensive to the religious leaders of the day. Because he was, I mean, come on, let's be honest. They, they beat him and killed him for a reason. Part of the reason is when he says, this is my father, he's claiming he's the son of God. Come on, y'all. So he says, in my father's house are many rooms. For not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself. That way, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Maybe some of you are feeling that right now. You're, you're wondering, okay, how do I know the way? I've, I've, I've never seen somebody live this out. What do I do? Where do I turn? He says, how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it is enough for us. If you're taking notes here, to show, be shown the father is enough. To be shown the father is enough for any pain, enough for any hurt, enough for any uh, sense of I don't know the way. Philip's declaring it. Jesus just said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the way to the Father. And what he's helping us to realize in a world that 
is gonna try to convince us that there's many paths and many ways is that, listen, there is a way that Jesus puts in front of us. And when he begins to show up and show us the way, it changes everything. So if you're sitting here and you're like, I wanna get to heaven, notice that Jesus didn't say this is the way to heaven. He actually said this is the way to the Father. Because the Father is the creator of all. He's made heaven and earth. And this fallen and broken world has disconnected us from him. And Jesus comes to show us that ultimately what's going on inside of each of us is we need a relationship with the Father. And Jesus is the way to that Father. Can I get an amen? That's your starting point today, your beginning point. Maybe your coming back point if you've been away from God, away from Jesus. It's to realize he's the way. You're going to find lots of self-help books. You're going to find a lot of documentaries and, and things that are going to try, and motivational coaches and things that are going to try to inspire you to be better. Be better. But none of us can be who we were created to be and grow up to be the real us until that father shows up in our life. And Jesus is that way. Now, there's some other things that, that he tackles in there. And, and he's tackling, ultimately, who is our father. And when you think about this idea, you know, you didn't get to choose your earthly father, but today you have a choice. Which father will you choose? The father of lies or the father who loves you? You see, while we don't choose an earthly father, God gives us a choice because he's chosen us. I'm going to say something here that, 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 that's going to be a moment that is against what culture teaches us right now. You see, we're often taught we're all God's children. But we need to understand that, that actually until we've chosen the heavenly father, we have a different father. And we're following somebody other than God. So we have this choice that God presents us through Jesus between the father of lies and the father who loves us. Let me show you where, where we see a number of places, but I'm gonna show you one right now for sake of time. John 8, verse 39 through 44 says, they answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did, but now you seek to kill me. He's talking to religious leaders. He said, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God, this is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works your father did. They said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you do not bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he is a liar and the father of lies. the truth of God's word. There's a father of lies that is often inviting each of us to follow him, to be his child. And yet here's Jesus who shows us the way to the father who loves us, who wants to adopt us. Listen to what Romans 8 verses 14 through 17 says. For all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But if you, you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, can you say Abba? Abba? Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may be also glorified with him. 
See, this father who loves us adopts us into his family. I showed you a picture of my family earlier. In, uh, back in 2018, uh, our daughter Jasmine joined our family. As she enjoy, joined our family, it was with the intent to adopt. And in the state of Michigan where we lived at the time, that adoption process would take about a year. But she's, she's our daughter. She's in our home. I had a moment with the heavenly father where, where he gave me an overwhelming love for her. I will never replace her biological father. But the Lord gave me the heavenly father's love for you, for her to say yes, to adopt, because that little girl at the moment that she came into our home, she didn't want anything to do with me. For months, she would barely speak to me, barely talk to me. It was difficult. I feel like I'm a pretty nice guy. She didn't want anything to do with me. And so I'm like praying, Lord, how, how do I get to her heart? How do, I, how do I dial her down the middle? So I would try to do fun things. And then I would try to cook her favorite foods. And I would try to do things that showed her that I loved her. But nothing was working. And then we left. Cindy and I typically take like an annual retreat together. And we left for that week. And when we came back, suddenly, this little girl was calling me dad and I love you. And I'm telling you, I, I just lost it because the Lord had done something that was ahead of the legal adoption process where his spirit had moved. And I'm telling you, I understand this adoption thing in a much deeper way because of it. See, our heavenly father looks at us and says, I want to be your father. I want to remove the lies. I want to pour out love on you. I want to invite you into something greater where you have a new family and a new inheritance. I got to show you this picture. This is from the courtroom when her adoption was complete. This was in uh, May of 20, uh, 2019. Uh, th this was the culmination. These are all people from our church family and community uh, there in Southwest Michigan. The bailiffs literally asked to have our case that day. They had to move us into a bigger courtroom that day than they typically used for adoption because so many people wanted to come and support and love and share in this new inheritance, this new adoption that God was orchestrating. That is a picture, I believe, of what the Lord does when you and I say, I want to be adopted by the, the Father. We have this community of people that surround us, celebrate with us, giving us a new inheritance, a new lease on life. Now, I had you say the word Abba for a reason. Uh, if we can go to those notes, Abba, some of you have heard that it means daddy. And, and it does. And, and that's, I, I gotta show you this. I, I've kept this for years. My oldest Hannah, uh, can you guys zoom in on this? My oldest Hannah made this t-shirt. It's got daddy and a whale. I guess I was a little large at the time. And it, it says 2008 on it. And it just says daddy. And somehow, some way for 16 years through all the moves and everything, that gel art has survived. And, and every time I see this, I'm like, it, it reminds me like that little four-year-old new daddy. You know, my kids are so funny in the last year. They're like, dad, you got a, you've got a smell. You've got a scent. I'm like, wait, what? Like kids will say the darndest things right at any age. And here's the deal. Like y'all, you know, you, you do right. Like it's that soap you use, the aftershave, the cologne, the ax body spray, whatever it is, or it's just the end of the day, you being musty, right? Like, you got a scent, you got a smell. And, and my kids were telling me, like, Dad, we know when you've been in a room, we know when you, some of you are like, man, I don't want to shake his hand today. I, but, but, but my kids know me in a different kind of intimate way, right? Do you know one of the six meanings for the Hebrew word Abba actually implies that we know the scent of our father? That we're so close and so intimate with the Lord that we know the scent of our father and how he shows up. 
Now, the second piece of this is so important because Abba is not just a word that means intimacy. It's actually a discipleship word that means obedience. It's a word that that shows up when Jesus said, Father, not my will, but you. It's a word that shows up when we see back to Genesis 22, Isaac saying, my father. It's a word that means that we're close and we know him but we're also willing to be obedient. And you all know this is true because my kids can tell me, daddy, 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 I love you. And if they don't obey me, I feel a certain way. Anybody? You see, Abba, when we cry out, means Lord, I love you and I wanna know you intimately like a daddy. But I'm also willing to obey you. Great picture of this is a kid jumping into the deep end of the pool or into a pool in general, right? A kid that, that's learning how to swim, four or five years old, whatever it might be. Some of you are like me, you mean 20? That's when I learned, okay? It's a different illustration. That didn't work, I shouldn't have said that. So a kid jumping into their daddy's arms, saying, daddy, I trust you, I love you. I'm, I'm gonna, you know, dad's saying, come on, jump in, obey me. Can you picture what the heavenly father might be saying to you today? That I want to show up and I I want to be your Abba. I want to be intimate and close to you. And I want you to to not just call me dad and and love me, but, but to actually obey and follow me. It's a discipleship word that means intimacy and obedience. And you see this in the life of Jesus. You see this in what he taught. Let me just read to you these last few verses from John 14. He says, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Philip had a gap. He still couldn't see the father. Whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the father who dwells in me does his works. He's trying to close the gap in Philip's life, trying to close the gap for us to really know the Father. He says, believe me, verse 11, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Listen to this next part. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Last bit of the notes here. The Father fills gaps and does great works through his children. The Father fills the gaps in our life. He is enough. Whatever gap you have, whatever place that you need, I'm telling you, when the Father shows up, the real us grows up. And we begin to become more like Jesus and begin to fulfill the plans that he has for our lives. What gaps do you have today? Let the Father show up in them. What gaps do you have in your life? Let the Father show up in them. And and then do we believe what it just said? Which is if we do, there are great works that our Father wants to do in and through us. He wants to use you to show others the Father. Whether you're male, female, it's bringing people to Jesus, showing them the real Father. Can I get an amen? And he says that that as he fills those gaps, these greater works are ahead and we're going to pray and call on his name and he's going to answer Y'all, I'm just telling you what the word says. So so maybe today, part of what we need to do is to be honest with the real us, to bring all of us to him. Say, God, show up. Show us the Father. Use me to show others the Father. There's three questions that, that lead us to a place of application. How do we apply this next steps? The first is, will you choose Jesus and the Father that loves you today? Scripture is true. It's faithful. If you're sitting here and you're like, oh, I think I've been following the Father of lies. Praise God that you're recognizing it. Do not 
feel condemned, feel convicted. Scripture says if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, you will be saved. It also says if, you're, if we bring everything to him, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Come to him. Choose the father that loves you today. Secondly, will you let the father fill the gaps and be enough for you today? I don't know what the gap is. I, I don't know if you have a bullet wound to the chest right now. Maybe it's a single shot that, that's hit that's never healed. Maybe it's shrapnel. Maybe you feel like you were hit with a shotgun and have a hole in your heart, multiple holes. All I know is God's word is true. And he is able to fill gaps and to heal hearts, to bind our wounds, to lead us forward. So will you bring those to him and let him be enough for you? And then third, will you ask the Father to do great works in and through you? Maybe you've done the first two and, and your moment is to say, I'm gonna call on him in prayer. I'm gonna say, God, I'm gonna quit being selfish with my life. I'm gonna quit serving the father of lies or myself. God, I wanna do great works for you. I wanna show others the Father. Maybe that's where you're at today. Will you ask the Father? Because he wants to show up in that and do a mighty work. He is Abba. So how we're gonna finish today is a little bit different. Because as I was praying this through, I'm thinking about this moment in time and we're gonna sing in a minute and you're gonna be able to come forward and be prayed for. But I thought, man, what a Sunday to call on our heavenly father together. You know, Jesus taught us to pray. How he taught us to pray was to call on the Father who hopefully has just shown himself to you today. I'm gonna to ask if you're able, would you just stand with me? In the scriptures, there's a section known as the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter six. It begins calling on our Father. And so we're gonna just pray this together out loud as if, as if we believe that he's the heavenly father, that if we call on his name and ask, he'll begin to do these things, that, that when he, the father shows himself, he'll begin to grow us up in these ways, amen? So let's pray this together. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father, we thank you for this moment. We bless you and ask for your blessing as we follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.